to tighten the top rope. Try to keep Jorge Luis Gonzalez a little bit closer toward the middle of the ring, even when he leans back tail of the tape and you can see that for the first time in his professional career Riddick Bowe goes into the ring against a bigger man Gonzalez is taller at six feet seven has one inch reach advantage Bowe typically outweighs Gonzalez by six pounds Larry Bowe looks as, as fit or fitter than at any time since the first fight with Holyfield perhaps we can attribute that to the fact that uh, he gave up the idea of putting a kitchen in his bedroom and put a gym in his backyard instead. Punch stat numbers, Larry. <laughs> Here are our punch stat numbers to give you an idea of how active these fighters are, but keep in mind that these numbers were, uh, were uh, assembled against completely different kinds of oppositions. Gonzalez fighting a lot of fighters who were, who were as anonymous going in as they were coming out, uh, both fighting a higher caliber of fighter. And, and jabs, look at this, uh, a remarkable statistical coincidence. Both have big jabs, punishing jabs when they use them correctly. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Riddick Bowe, Jorge Luis Gonzalez fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. There is no standing eight count. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop the fight, and you can be saved by the bell only in the last round. Jim. Beautiful, Harold. And now let's see if Jorge Luis Gonzalez is going to wear that black cowboy hat into the ring. All right, there's the first answer of the evening. He will. In his last fight, on March 11, on the undercard of Bo Hyde, Gonzalez knocked out a fighter named Brian Scott in the second round. Scott had just gotten married in one of those Las Vegas wedding chapels the evening before, and as he crumpled to the canvas, his brand new wife leaned up on the ring oak apron and took snapshots of his bloodied face. <laughs> it was quite a moment. A memorable snapshot for their, for their golden years. There's a good reason Gonzalez is wearing his hat, I assume, because he's had a bad hair life. With plenty of life yet to come. First attempt to step over the ring ropes is unrequited. On his second try, Gonzalez makes it in. And you see the blue Reyes gloves that both fighters will be wearing tonight. What's the reason that they're blue? No particular reason. They just are. There's Gonzalez's record. 23 wins, no losses, 22 KOs. Probably the biggest name fighter he's been in the ring with was Ronaldo Snipes. I wonder if it's relevant that uh, in his amateur career he lost eight fights by disqualification. Bound to be relevant to something. He also had 169 KOs in 220 amateur fights with the opponents wearing headgear. So he does have heavy hands. I, I will say this. Well, well, we'll wait a while while we watch Riddick Bowe walk to the ring. Saunter. He's going to saunter to the ring. He is, as you can see, he's worked up a sweat. He does have the look of somebody who is eager to get at what he's going to get to. Yeah, he looks engaged tonight. The odds on this fight, incidentally, opened at 4-1 to one for Bo. They closed at somewhere around 12 or 13 to 5. A lot of people betting on Gonzalez late in the going. Legendary 83-year-old trainer Eddie Futch precedes Bo into the ring. Incidentally, uh, someone in the Marine Corps has uh, called us to uh, correct me on Scott O'Grady. I said Scott O'Hara. I misspoke myself. My apologies. <laughs> to the O'Grady family. John O'Grady, right? Yeah. It's, it's John O'Grady. But we understood the point. All right, they're both in there, and they're being kept separated from one another. You look at Riddick Bowe's record, 36 wins, the one loss, a razor-thin decision to Holyfield in the second fight, 30 KOs for Bowe. And right now, let's go on up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the pre-fight introductions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the featured bout of the evening as Spencer Promotions the MGM Grand, and your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, this Bud's for you, present 12 rounds of boxing for the WBO World 
Heavyweight Championship. This belt is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Luther Mack, Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Crispin Rivera. Executive Director Mark Ratner. Physicians at ringside, Chief Physician Dr. James Wish Game. Attending physicians, Dr. William Berliner and Dr. Robert Voy. The timekeeper is Al Bicic. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Jane Broadfoot. This bout is also sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization. President Francisco Barcarcel. Supervisor at ringside for the WBO, George Cristadulo. The scoring will be done on a 10 point must system, and the three judges are Dwayne Hoard, Chuck Jampa, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action referee, Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the world's largest hotel, casino, and theme park, the MGM Grand of Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed in gold, and weighing 237 pounds. He's a native of Cuba who now lives and trains right here in Las Vegas, Nevada, and has a professional record of 23 consecutive victories without a loss. He scored 22 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the number one ranked heavyweight challenger in the world, the undefeated Jorge Luis. Across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, trimmed with blue, and weighing 243 pounds. He comes to us from Brooklyn, New York. This 1988 Olympic medalist now has a professional record of 36 victories, 30 by knockout, against only one defeat, and he has captured two world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning WBO World Heavyweight Champion. Don't worry about it. All right, wait a minute. Okay, all right. Wait a minute. Step aside here, okay? All right. Step aside. All right, if he goes right here, I'm going to call it all right. You understand that? It's going to be a little punch right here. And we've already gone, we've already gone through all the instructions in the dressing room. I expect a tough, clean fight. Put, put, hey, this man, put your hands down. I expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on! There's enough bad blood between these fighters to start an epidemic. Let's see if it starts a fight. Generally, when there's a lot of smoke, there's just a whole lot more smoke. <laughs> As a rule. Well, I think if nothing else, Gonzalez has gotten Bo's attention. hair life, huh? Good phrase, Larry. It's like he got halfway to being George Foreman and just couldn't bring himself to go all the way. Ready here? All right, here we go. They begin round one, and let's see if Bo wants to brawl or box. Both fighters starting out with the jab. What happened to all that fire that was supposed to happen? That's the well, Gonzalez is a fighter who doesn't like to come forward. He's uncomfortable doing so. So, Eddie Kutch said to me yesterday, George, Riddick's going to have to make the fight. He's going to have to go forward and pressure Gonzalez. They believe that Jorge Luis Gonzalez has never been pressured in his 23 pro fights, and he'll see something entirely different tonight. Big right hand over the top by Bo, glancing blow. 
One thing about it, Gonzalez has had knockouts, but he never had a knockout from long range. He wants you to come to him, and he throws short punches. He doesn't take advantage of his ex superior reach. Bo should not follow this guy to the rope. He throws short punches for a guy with long arms. But, but Bo thinks he's better off inside because he's such a good inside fighter for a big guy, George. No, but he is not. This guy has an amazing reflexes, Gonzalez, and the issue with short chopping punches. Not you think the counter-punching style could really operate to Gonzalez's advantage? Hard right hand by Bo. Gonzalez wobbled into the ropes. Riddick working inside where he wants to be. Now Gonzalez leans on him against the ropes. Greg Payne, an American amateur, is the only man, according to Jorge Luis Gonzalez, who ever knocked him down. But he's on the verge of going down right now as Riddick Bowe deals the right hands in round one. Riddick Bowe doing an excellent job, but you just don't want to follow a puncher. This guy can throw one of those wild looping punches and drop you. It's time to work his left jab. Gonzalez, like I said, wherever there's a lot of smoke, generally there's a whole lot more smoke somewhere else. Gonzalez may or may not have his legs back. Bo looking for a way to walk inside again. Lands the left jab, just misses the right hand behind it. Gonzalez ties him up. Now there's a hard right by Gonzalez, but Bo comes right through it. Bo's had a hard time throwing that overhand right with smaller guys, but it seems that Gonzalez is right there for those right hands. Overhand right. Eddie Futch told Bo, when you get Gonzalez to the ropes, forget about his head and go to the body. They don't want to give Gonzalez an opportunity to counter coming off the ropes. Hard right hand coming up and under by Jorge Luis Gonzalez. Riddick Bo should make this boy get out in the middle of the ring. He's had more success out there. You lay on the ropes, you're going to do what this guy does. He just sits back there, waits to chop you with the right hand. Rough first round for Gonzalez, but he survives it and keeps firing at the end. Now we'll see a smile from Gonzalez's face. What about the fire? Hector Garcia, what's going on in Gonzalez's corner? Where do you want me to come? Give him water. He's, he's, he's over. It's okay, it's okay. He's okay. It's okay. George Foreman was exactly correct. The right hand has never been the most impressive punches in, in Bo's arsenal, but against a taller opponent, it is being effective. In round one, Bo landed 13 of 16 jabs, 81%. So he's got an inviting target when he throws the jab. Now Gonzalez starts out with his own jab in round two. Bo wasted a lot of energy and didn't get a finish. Now Gonzalez backs up, uses left jab, invites Bo to come on in. Pretty soon you're going to see Bo tremble a little bit with right hand. Yeah, but Riddick is clocking Gonzalez with that jab. I mean, he snapped Jorge's head back twice more in this round. And now Riddick pulls Gonzalez into the ropes. Come on, Riddick. Step back. Keep the punches up. Come on. Bo following this puncher. You never follow a puncher. You don't stand up there and make him think about throwing a good shot. Step back, come on. Hey, hey, hey. Both of you. Hey, come on. Both of you knock that off. Come on. Right hand lead for Gonzalez. He seems to remember to throw the jab in the first 30 seconds of each round and then forgets about it from that point forward. Now, Bo is allowing Gonzalez to lean on the back of his neck. And when you're throwing hard shots, that starts to wear you down a lot more than you need to be worn down. Will Mills Lane take care of that for him? I don't think so. Mills Lane is thinking, hey, as long as they're covered up, I don't have to jump in there. Bo is falling for the wrong thing. 
But you're saying that even though Riddick is dominating the fight and dealing out a lot of punishment, he's making, in your view, mental errors that could hurt him later on. That's true. You don't follow a punch and then you don't let a punch. See, he's holding him by the head. Once you throw hard shots, you grab him by the head and it takes all your juice out of your legs. Oh, still doing most of the damage in these exchanges and landing at close range. It's deteriorating into a brawl. Hard right hand by Bo. Lane did take Gonzalez's hand off the back of Bo's neck. Gonzalez has had a lot of amateur fights where he's had to hold by the rope, hold by the head, so he's in his in his element. If this fight goes four rounds, it's going to catch up with both. with the jab and following with the right hand. Gonzalez not yet finding the counterpunch opportunity he'd like to have. In that round, it looked like Riddick Bo wanted to send Gonzalez on a boat lift back to Havana. Come on, in your nose, blow it out your mouth. One more time, come on. That's it. Use your jab and send him up. He can't get away from your jab. You can set him up for your hook. You can set him up for your right hand. Use that jab. And don't wait. Go right after it. Don't let him punch first. You got to go first. Riddick, Riddick Foe said he hasn't been hungry since, since that first Holyfield fight. Well, he looks hungry enough to eat a 238-pound opponent right here in one gulp. <laughs> Maybe he just wants to eat his heart. That's what Gonzalez said he was going to do to him. I haven't heard Eddie Futch so animated in the corner for a long time, so even this 84-year-old jockey is riding this big horse. You know, Eddie told me yesterday that there was a time when he worried about whether Bo really cared anymore, but he's decided that that's no longer a concern, that Bo is reinterested in his career, and therefore he, Eddie, is not wasting time trying to get him back to the heavyweight title. Gonzalez, he's weathered the storm. His jab is working now. If he doesn't get too overconfident, he can turn the momentum anytime. He's weathered the big storm. Gonzalez's corner telling him between rounds, use your left, go back to the jab, it's God's gift to you. Bo just missing with the right hand over the top. Quick punch, hey, hey, hold up, no, wait a minute. Quick punch on the break, come on, come on. Now here's the familiar posture for Gonzalez, leaning against the top rope, inviting Bo to come in. Bo is landing good right hands to the body. Though he's losing a lot of energy, those right hands to the body, he's throwing is going to take some energy away also. Again, the Eddie Futch prescription, when Gonzalez is in this position, forget his head, keep hammering the body. Now at this point, Riddick Bo should be a bit more conservative with his right hand. Hard jab by Bo. Gonzalez with a chance to be busy against a guy who's throwing a lot. Somehow it's just not in Jorge Luis Gonzalez to crank up a large punch output. He's mostly a one punch at a time guy. He's waiting around for one good shot, but let me tell you, he has enough power that one good shot could turn everything around. Perfect landing of the right hand for Bo. Gonzalez taking Bo's punches better now than was the case in round one. I think Gonzalez just did not expect Bo to have that kind of power early on. He's felt it now and sees it coming a little better, huh? That's right. Bo is starting to just bump into his shoulder and fall on the rope. Gonzalez, if he's in the kind of conditioning he's supposed to be in, weather the storm by fourth round, he can turn that corner. Bo is now got to start landing body punches, body punches, body punches.
much fat on Bo tonight. You're right, Larry. He looks better than he has at any time since November of 92 when he took the title from Holyfield. I think Bo let this guy fool him into being over-aggressive too early. He should have allowed this fight to kind of materialize as he went on. Look at that jab knocking a 237-pound man backward. This is the well-schooled Bo we used to talk about. Using that left hand and let thing, letting things happen after that. He was a dropout from that school for, the, for a couple of years, but he's gone back to school now. And Use your left hand. This guy is nobody. Use your left hand. Box. He's got a, a his eye. He's already shot. You're you're okay. You're perfectly perfectly okay. You're the one with the. I need more piece, man. You got it. Okay. All right. Let you push. Don't wait for him to leave. All right. Is it right about the head? Yeah. Oh, get, get, get a little, little closer, don't, don't, uh, do it too far back. Alright. Look at that, let's go. Set and sell. Look at and you're walking, keep that head moving, okay? Let's go. Uh -huh. Keep that head moving, you're okay. Alright? You saw on the graphic the wide margin by which Bo is outlanding Gonzalez and punched at numbers. Round four begins, it's a scheduled 12 rounds. Bo is doing an excellent job of spinning, bobbing and weaving. This guy, Gonzalez, is a trap fighter. If you don't get right back, you go to the left and you come back to the same position. You don't go to your left and stay to your left. He'll catch you. Gonzalez came perilously close to landing that straight right a few moments ago. He has landed a couple of good jabs here, beginning well in round four. There's blood coming from Gonzalez's mouth. Both fighters hitting coming out of a clinch there, and both landed. Right hand to the top of the head and another to the chin, but this time Gonzalez doesn't wobble, just really backs Bo up against smelling, the top rope. Really, Bo is smelling some finishing now. He's smelling it. But if he doesn't finish him, oh, but I'm telling you, once the guy starts to smell that kind of power and knowing that he's living, living the punishment, it's hard to turn him out. Good straight left hand by Bo. Gonzalez having some difficulty now. Bo landing constantly to Gonzalez's head. Referee, referee Mills Lane is looking deep into this now. He's not only watching the punches, he's watching the, the no return by Jorge Gonzalez. Bo is just beating him up inside without return. Him, the major difference is Bo has been landing that good left jail. Gonzalez has been paying attention to the newspapers. He'll realize that he needs to worry about quick stoppage in a state still reeling from the death of Jimmy Garcia. Bo landing at will. Gonzalez leans against the ropes. Now Gonzalez tries to counter and Bo just buds away. That right hand over the top is landing every time, George. This looks like the heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick Bo now. And that's coming from the heavyweight champion, Bo. Riddick Bo looks like the heavyweight champion of the world. Another landslide scoring round for Bo. And Gonzalez is taking quite a pounding as he sticks to his strategy of leaning against the ropes and throws very few punches in return. Bo risking disqualification there, and that was a stupid move. Exactly. And if I was a referee, would not allow him to get away with it. He's winning a fight. He doesn't need that kind of stuff. Shouldn't the referee have been there between them? Yep. So you got to be, you're right. Harold Letterman, 
Larry, let me tell you something. I've got it 40 nothing, 40 36. Larry, let me tell you something. That's why we have that 10 second warning. At the 10 second warning, the referee moves in close. He's supposed to be between the two fighters, so nobody gets in that shot after the bell rings. Mills Lane wasn't there. Riddick Bow fouled him. But on the other hand, Riddick Bow is fighting an absolutely great fight so far. Yeah. I scored that a 10 8 round, incidentally. Well, he staggered him after the bell rang. I mean, you know, it could have been 10 8, but the stagger was after the bell. And no fewer than five Nevada State Athletic Commission officials gathered around Gonzalez's corner to peer at him as his seconds worked on it. Rick Bow is going about this in a workmanlike fashion. He goes back to the body, even after doing a lot of damage in the prior round. Give us your scorecard officially. Okay, Larry, once again, 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing, Riddick Bow. One thing I don't understand is how Mills Lane can talk to Jorge Luis Gonzalez if the man doesn't speak English, and he keeps he keeps talking to him. But in any case, Riddick Bow is fighting an absolutely great fight as I see it. He couldn't be doing any better. Harold, you know as well as we do, Gonzalez speaks a lot more English than he lets on. Gonzalez starting to come to life a little bit in round five. Round four was dreadful for him. Bo landed 53 punches by punch stat numbers. Gonzalez landed six. And there's another rocket left hand by Riddick Bo. He's sharp tonight, George. I'm telling you, the, the missing ingredients has been that long left jab by Riddick Bo. Jorge Gonzalez has the reach advantage, but he doesn't use it. Stands back there and waits for one good shot. I would not allow Jose, I mean, uh, Gonzalez to take that many right hands like that. I just wouldn't allow it. Hard to believe he didn't go down on that one. That was a shot. I just wouldn't allow him to catch too many like that. Would you stop it on the next one? Yeah, if he gets caught like that and stands up like that, he's a brave fighter. It's going to take a lot more to get him down than what's necessarily gets it, what ordinarily gets a guy down. Don't let him get killed. Can you let heavyweights go a little bit longer than no, fighters in lower weight probably. classes? Probably. No, no, you just don't. Heavyweights can do more damage. Well, but, but very few heavyweights throughout history, George, have suffered serious head injuries in the ring, in fights. Maybe cumulatively over a career, but there's very few that have suffered serious injuries. Well, like, well we let's not we, see one tonight. Yeah, we don't want any history to be made tonight. Hard right hand by Gonzalez, but not a lot of snap in his punches now. The Riddick Bow is hitting good hard shots, but he's not knocking this guy out. When you can incur that much punishment, that's when the damage sits in. Riddick Bow is starting to blow his nose a little bit. Good body shot. Riddick Bow with the right hand to the ribcage. Gonzalez still fighting. Wide open for that right hand. He takes another right hand shot. Wobbles away. Lane looking closely. Fifth round coming to a close. This guy's got the right height, height for Riddick Bow. Comfortable with that height. He's going to eat right one hand. more right hand before the bell rings. No, he's not. This fight could be stopped between rounds. It's conceivable. Okay, don't run. Okay? Well, listen. Bo, in your nose real deep and out your mouth. In your nose again. Don't wait on him. You got to be first. Okay. Come on, man. Okay. Give him some water on his head. Put water on his head. Wash off his face. Move your legs. Gonzalez is standing up to awful punishment, which speaks to the fact that he has everything in his life at stake here. He's a, this is a fight that he has wanted for his entire life. He staked his whole life on it. So he is being as brave as it's possible to be in the face of this onslaught. But he's being profoundly ineffective too. 
in round five. Bo landed 34 punches. Gonzalez, who landed six punches in the preceding round, only landed nine in round five. Gonzalez is lasting strictly on heart now. Has nothing else left but his heart. And if he's able to land one of those good right hands, boy, that heart is a really get pumped up. Gonzalez, by and large, trains himself. Our interpreter, Hector Garcia, says he's getting no useful advice in the corner between rounds. So he's pretty much on his own in here. And for the first time, Bo shows some signs of running out of gas. Well, he's just tired. Sometimes at one point, it looked like a fight is going to go on and on. You got to pace yourself. You got to do something other than throw punches. So Bo hasn't put that in his repertoire yet. Bob and Weave touch, touch and go. It's the only thing missing. And when you're a good puncher like he is, but yet not a devastating knockout puncher, you got to learn how to mix it up a little bit. And, of course, while Gonzalez work up, work up. gets, according to our interpreter, Hector Come Garcia, a little advice in his corner between rounds, Bo's listening to Eddie Futch. On paper, that looks like a big advantage. Ooh, there right it hand. goes. That should do it. That should do it. That's the first time Gonzalez has been down as a pro. And if he gets up from this, he fools me. Now, Mills Lane doesn't bother to complete the count. Another terrific right hand shot for Riddick Bowe, and I got to tell you, Larry, I wasn't sure we'd ever see him look this good again. He needed the challenge. He was getting too many easy opponents. He was getting careless. You can't give a, a feed a fighter setups and setups and setups a good fighter and expect him to stay sharp. And this brings him back to the top. This is what. We saw in him, in Holyfield, one a, a magnificently schooled fighter for a big man, and he took an opponent to school tonight. One thing about it, I'm very shocked and surprised of the amateurish habits that Jorge Gonzalez had. It's a good it point. Like a rank amateur. It didn't look like a didn't look like a professional fighter at all in my it's mind. A very good point, George. He's a great amateur, but he was an amateur for too many years. And when you're an amateur for that long, it's hard to break bad habits. Never a great pro. Well, let's take another look at the knockout combo. It's uh, a standard left and right, and the right hand is a beauty. Gonzalez actually kind of stepping up forward into that right hand, George. So for the fans at home, they'll always remember wherever there's a lot of smoke, there's, smoke. there's a whole lot more smoke. <laughs> All right, and on the last angle, we'll show you the knockout in real speed. So you can get a sense of the precision of this right-hand blow. See Gonzalez lean a little bit forward and just take it. He's had just too many of them all night. That overhand right that Bo has been landing consistently over and over just took his toll. Riddick, Bro Riddick Bo says thanks to his God. And right now, we're going to go up to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mills Lane reaches the count of 10 at one minute and 50 seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory and still WBO World Heavyweight Champion, Riddick Big Daddy. Well, George, the strategy is to string enough impressive performances together for Bo to return to the level of people's champion. You said earlier. He looks like the heavyweight champ of the world. I think the, the probably pre up mistakes have been, listen, you match this guy with too many boxers, guys who are going to move. He's not a uh, what you call a true aggressor. You match him up with a guy big enough to try and exchange punches with him, he's going to look good like that every time. It's been Final. a been a matchmaker's uh, 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 disaster with Bo earlier. Too many guys who were trying to just run, run, run. Heck of a point. This was the ideal opponent tonight. You look at final punch stat numbers and you see the enormous margins Bo was rolling up. 
in punches thrown, in punches landed, uh, and proceeding from there to the percentage. Riddick just completely dominating the fight. And among those 188 landed punches, a uh, fairly equal proportion of jabs and power shots. He did it all in there. The WBO looks like they got a good champion. 99 total jabs landed by Bo, only 35 by Gonzalez. It was a mismatch all the way, and Riddick Bo's best performance by far since his loss to Evander Holyfield in November of 1993.